Hey everybody and welcome back to Northwest Craftsman. I hope that you're having an excellent day today. You're about to have an excellent day today or you already had an excellent day today if you're sitting in your bed late at night watching this video. Today I'm gonna to bring you a new tool as you can see from the title and we're gonna be setting up this brand new Bosch router table. So I also got the router itself, but I'm just gonna be setting up the router table today, kind of walking you guys through it. And I'm just gonna voice over the whole process so that I can kind of focus on setting it up, doing it right, so that you guys can kind of see all the nitty gritty pieces without me trying to focus on all my commentary all the way through. All right, let's get it set up. So there are two primary ways that you can do your router table. One is to make it and one is to buy it. There are a couple of reasons that I chose to purchase my router table, but the primary ones are that the setup is easier, the tolerances are probably tighter than I can manufacture at this point, and the integration with my Bosch router is already set up and easy. Now within the realm of purchasing a router, there's a lot of different options and a lot of different brands, but I chose to go with the Bosch 1181 because it's the newer model of a very popular router table of theirs, the Bosch 1171. There's a couple of different upgrades to this table, but the vast majority of the operation is still the same. Also, to make sure that it's said early on, the router plate mounts to many different brands of routers, not just Bosch branded routers. However, it is set up to work very nicely with something like the Bosch 1617 EVSPK. One of the things that I noticed is how well this router table was packaged. Everything was packaged in a way that was tight but well protected, and in a way that as you disassembled everything, it wasn't all out of order so you could start putting it together pretty quickly. That first piece that I pulled out is the cast aluminum top, and those two dark green pieces are the sides that are going to hold up the tabletop. They might be made out of plastic, but once they are mounted to that tabletop, I was surprised at how rigid and sturdy the whole setup was. So to go through all the different miscellaneous components, first up is the router plate. You can see all the different holes for all the different styles of mounts. The manual has all the information for which holes to use on which styles. Next up is the feather boards, the power switch and cord, the dust collection port, which fits a two and a half inch hose, all of the fasteners that you're going to need, some clear protective guides for use in different situations, some plate inserts for different sizes of bits, the MBF fences, which provide a nice slick backing, some shims the manual said were for jointing, but I still don't know exactly how they work and we'll need to look that up. And then inside of this tiny little folded plate here, we have some face plates, one for the power switch and one for a side pocket. And then last but not least, we have the fence mount. This is the rigid backing for those MDF plates, which allows everything to stay at 90 degrees and stable throughout all of the different cuts. This is made out of what looks like just extruded aluminum with some fancy machining. I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up a little bit as I do the actual assembly. One of the notes that I do have to make is that Bosch did an extremely good job with their directions. Every single fastener, all the different details are all laid out very well in the manual. If you read the manual, they'll tell you which way to put the washers, which way to put the nuts, which side to put the nuts in. I mean, literally down to the most minute detail, they have it all laid out in the manual. So after putting the sidewalls together and organizing all of my fasteners, the first step is to put the tabletop on. Putting the tabletop on is really simple. It's really just about aligning the holes with the sidewalls and then making sure that all your fasteners fit through. I went ahead and just hand tightened them first before I went through and did a final cranking down. Which, to note, you don't have to do too much, you just need to make sure that everything is snug. Next up is mounting the power switch to the faceplate. Like the tabletop, this was super easy. It was mostly just about getting the right fasteners, lining it up with the holes, and screwing everything in until it was snug. One of the other things that's worth noting is that all of the tolerances on all of these holes were set up really nicely. I never had anything that misaligned even just a little bit, and it all fit together very smoothly. As a mechanical engineer that has designed parts, I was really impressed with what the Bosch engineers were able to do with all of these different components. Next up was the dust port, which honestly worked better than any other dust port I've had on any of my other tools. If you had a little bit of the bit and a little bit of the workpiece lined up with it, it got all of the shavings and all of the chips cleared without any issues at all. Next up was installing the MDF fences. The MDF fences have these nice large knobs on the backside of these fasteners with these slots so that you can slide them back and forth during operation and adjust the size of that opening to the vacuum port. One of the more precise areas of this installation and one of the more sensitive areas for adjustments was with this router plate. Bosch provided all of these different fasteners that you put into the bottom and they actually act as stands or kickstands for the router plate so that you can adjust them up and down. The way that I ended up screwing them in quickly is just by using my drill chuck over the top of the Allen wrench provided so that I could quickly screw them down to nearly the bottom. The router plate itself has access holes so that you can access these and slowly raise them up to get it level all the way across and fully supported. 
There are two reasons that this leveling process is so important. The first one is so that as you're bringing your work pieces across the surface, they don't catch on the edge as they're coming up onto that router plate. The second and more important reason is so that your spindle is kept perpendicular to the work surface. Just in case you've never seen them before, these are called feather boards and they're used to help hold your work piece tight up against the fence or down against your tabletop. I didn't start using them at the very beginning, but they are very handy to have so that you don't have to push quite so hard into your fence and into the tabletop. To install the fixed base portion of my 1617 EVSPK, I started by removing that black anti-friction portion and the maple handles. Next up, following the manual, I lined up the holes on my router with the router plate and screwed them in place. After gently lowering it into place, there are four fasteners around the edge that allow you to tighten this down to the router table itself so that it cannot move. In the initial installation, most of the leveling for the router plate should have been done. However, after mostly snugging these down, go around to each one of them and use your level to ensure that everything is still level. Make your final adjustments and then snug it down tight. I'm not sure if this type of mechanism is common on other router tables, but I was really impressed with its robustness and accuracy. Once the router plate was in, the fence could be mounted to the tabletop. It has the same large knobs for easy adjustment and sliding during use. At this point, the table was ready to install the router. The Bosch 1617 EVSPK has a really cool quick swap feature between the plunge base and the fixed base. Because the fixed base is mounted in here, I can quickly install it after doing some plunge routing. I didn't mention this previously, but the back of the power switch has two different plugs on it. One is for the router, and one is easily for a dust collection system. This is really handy if you don't want your dust collection system to be on 100% of the time, especially if you have a dedicated dust collection system for your router table. Here is another view of what that quick swap system looks like. Getting ready for the first test, one of the things that I noticed was how easy it is to get the new bits installed. The collet has easy access, and if you remove this little tiny plastic window on the back, it allows for easy access of the second wrench to provide a method of tightening the collet properly. Before plugging in the main power to the switch, ensure that everything is turned off. It is also important to note that when you're doing a first power on test, it is a good idea to plan to turn it off immediately so that if anything is going to go wrong, you are turning it off as quick as humanly possible. Here's what that test looks like on the router table. Well, it doesn't seem like anything worked. Ah, that's right, you have to make sure that you also turn the router on underneath the router table as well. That's more like it. So that's a successful full power test. Here's a close up of some of that power switch action. On a more serious note, if you'd like to make sure that your router table cannot be used while you're away, remove that yellow key. One of the other nice features of this router table is the designed indents around the fastener mounting locations. This means that if you don't have a dedicated table to mount your router table to, you can clamp them down to an existing workbench to properly secure them. Here's a quick test of the table in action. Clean cut, fed smoothly, and like I had mentioned earlier, there's no debris because the dust extraction port worked so well. Honestly, I think I might have a new favorite tool around the shop. Well, everybody, there she is. Uh, that's the new router table with the router all installed, and I am super excited to get working with this thing. If you have any questions about how I set this up or what I'm gonna use it for or anything else about the channel, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. If you'd like to see the unboxing of this new router, go ahead and click that right over here. And then thank you guys as always for sticking around. We really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, we'd love it if you would consider subscribing. If you like the kind of videos we're putting out, um, it really just means a lot to us when you guys subscribe to the channel and you stick around and you like the content, you comment, you get involved, and it just really means a lot. So thank you guys very much for being around. If, you're already a if you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for being here as well. All right, well, I'll see you guys another time. Have a great one. Bye.